A warm welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 8th of July. Now I'm going to be looking at some fairly alarming data today from the British Heart Foundation, which is basically a charity that supports various types of heart research. Now it does give some explanations for the dramatic increase in cardiac deaths that we are seeing. But I'm going to add um, nuance to this data when we compare it with the international excess deaths, which we'll see remain high and yet we're hearing nothing about this in mainstream media or from our politicians. Now this is the article here from the British Heart Foundation. Not particularly scientifically detailed but you know fairly clear as far as it goes and we'll see that it uh, it is deeply uh, troubling. Now I have checked the data that they give from the official government site and it does check out the data is accurate. So let's look at this um, this, is, this is interesting for two reasons. Firstly, for what it says, and secondly, for what it doesn't say. So we'll be looking at both aspects of that. Now, um, it doesn't take too long to go through this. Nearly 100,000 more deaths involving heart conditions and strokes than usual since the pandemic began. Now, this is the official government data from the Office of Health Improvements that it comes from. We're going to do more on that shortly. Uh, There is a breakdown of the cardiovascular data, but the cardiovascular data, if you add together the diseases of the heart and blood vessels, including the diseases of the blood vessels that affect the brain, what I would normally call cerebrovascular disease, they are by far and away the biggest cause of excess deaths. Although other things do crop up, which are quite interesting, although respiratory disease, which you might expect after a respiratory pandemic, doesn't really feature very much at all. But let's stick to what we're doing at the moment. Since the pandemic began, uh, uh, an average of over 500 additional deaths a week from cardiovascular disease. Quite alarming, really. Um, So that includes heart, blood vessel and blood supply to the brain uh, deaths, cardiovascular, cerebrovascular conditions. Um, More excess deaths involving cardiovascular conditions than any other group. This is what we're seeing mostly, diseases of the heart and blood vessels. A total of the exact number here, 96,540 excess extra cardiovascular deaths since February 2020, which I suppose was roughly the start of the pandemic. Now, in the first year of the pandemic, COVID-19 drove high numbers of excess deaths. Now, um, camps have become a bit divided on this. But uh, there's no question that I talk to my friends who work on intensive care and they were seeing people dying of COVID in 2020 in the Wuhan wave. And there's no question that cardiovascular deaths were one of the ways that people sadly uh, died during the pandemic. More were from the um, the, the COVID pneumonia, the, the alveoli filling up with fluid, but heart complications were certainly there because we know that the virus and the spike proteins can affect the heart directly. So th- this this was certainly happening. We could argue about the extent it was happening, but it was happening in 2020. The number of deaths involving cardiovascular diseases remained above high levels. So even though COVID-19 deaths have fallen since then and fallen dramatically, uh, cardiovascular disease uh, deaths, deaths haven't. And this, of course, means that not all of the deaths can be explained by COVID. Most of the cardiovascular deaths that have occurred since um, the start since 2021 really most of those certainly since 2022 have not been covid um covid uh, caused the majority uh, we believe that there are now other major factors driving the continued in, in uh, continued excess deaths in cardiovascular conditions so british heart foundation is looking to other causes and, and of course we agree with this uh, completely we're calling on the government to take charge in an increasingly urgent cardiovascular crisis. Again, we agree. Why are we not hearing government ministers coming on talking about the excess deaths that we're seeing and the cardiovascular deaths being part of that? Uh, they were quite happy to be high profile during the pandemic, but now everything's gone a bit quiet, including the majority of the mainstream media. Not all, but the majority of the mainstream media. Some newspapers are still talking about this, but most... Uh, certainly the television outlets uh, you're not really hearing much about this at all and uh, I don't listen to much BBC anymore but people that do tell me there's not much about this or hardly anything about this on the BBC disappointing 
Um, Dr. Do- Do- Dr. Griffiths, British Heart Foundation Chief Executive. It's deeply troubling that so many more people with cardiovascular disease have lost their lives over the past three years. Indeed, it is. Um, for years now, it's been clear that we are firmly in the grip of a heart and stroke care emergency. Yes, but it's got dramatically worse since 2020. Uh, there's no time to waste. Government needs to get their act together, take control of the crisis. We agree completely. Now, the latest figures that they're talking about here, um, that they talk about waiting times, w- w- waiting time for time sensitive cardiac procedures, 390,000 people. Of course, this is a huge factor. No one's disputing this. Average ambulance response times are terrible, above 30 minutes since the beginning of 2022. Um, way too long for cardiac conditions. We agree with them. They even reached 90 minutes for one some appalling period of time. Um, lack of primary uh, health care is another one. Getting to see a GP in this country is very, very difficult. Is blood pressure being controlled? Are other risk factors being controlled? So th- they are quite happy to talk about these things and to push these uh, these ideas. But as we've said, there's things they don't say. Uh, now, the, the, but they do say concern with the potential with COVID-19 um so what they're saying is that people who've had COVID-19 are probably more likely to get heart disease in the future is their contention which is there is some evidence for people um, without pre-existing heart conditions who caught COVID-19 before the vaccine rollout in 2020 so we see that British Heart Foundation are very pro the standard uh, narrative that they have to put that in when it wasn't really necessary uh i.e in 2020 40% 40% more likely to develop cardiovascular disease, five times more likely to die uh, in the 18 months after infection. But, of course, is this the only factor? Because the majority of people who have had COVID have also had subsequent, shall we say, pharmacological interventions. And how do we tease out what is the original COVID and what is other interventions that they may have had since they had the active COVID infection or before the active COVID infection? So... We're just not getting the whole picture here. This is the frustrating thing. We need a free and open debate about all of the possible factors. And this is is my main frustration. British Heart Foundation wants uh, prioritisation of NHS uh, heart care. Renewed focus on preventable, uh, preventing causes of cardiovascular disease, of course. Um, But we need to be open to all possible causes of heart disease to prevent all possible causes of heart disease. And they want a bit more research, which, of course, is true. Um, Associate Medical Director of the British Heart Foundation, COVID-19 no longer fully explains the significant number of of excess deaths involving cardiovascular disease. Of course, we agree. But is there more to it than they are discussing in this article? Because uh, Dr. Sonia then goes on to talk about treatment difficulties, which we agree with. But are there other factors? Now, just before we look at international data, there's another completely unrelated uh, word I want to bring to your attention. Uh, That word is iatrogenesis. Uh, Iatro is Greek for doctor. Genesis, of course, is beginning. And this is defined in uh, this medical dictionary by this. Induced unintentionally by a physician or surgeon or by medical treatment or by diagnostic procedures. So iatrogenesis is anything to do with um, uh, unwanted effects of medical interventions regardless of the cause. And there's a lot of iatrogenesis around. A lot of medical interventions cause complications. Um, But unfortunately, they were not discussed in the article. So as we say, um, what I mentioned there was... uh, not really relevant but I thought I'd throw it in anyway now the key thing here is yes we've got this problem in the UK and I can't break down the causes of death in all the countries around the world by cardiovascular or other causes we don't have that data the United States for example is rubbish absolute rubbish at collecting federal level data Um, but let's look at the data we do have on excess deaths in general now Here we have this graph here. This is the 0% line. And this is excess mortality, deaths from all causes compared to the average over previous years. So we would expect all these lines here to be on that level there, but they're not. They're all above it. And I've been so, and I've taken this actually from the start of uh, 
I've taken this from 2020 here. So this is for the whole pandemic period. So we would expect it to be higher in these waves, but not now. Um, let's uh, look further. Now, here's a bit of a blow up. This is from, uh, I've just taken some, really some random dates here. This is sort of the 31st of March, 2022. And we see that the excess deaths in New Zealand were 27% in Australia. There were 11% in the United States, 8 Canada, 8 Ireland, 8 4%, Netherlands, 1 United Kingdom, slightly down for that short period of time. Or to take another random date here, 25th of, uh, 25th of December, 2022, again, um, I just took this date at random. I didn't mean to pick Christmas Day. But anyway, uh, Ireland 41%, Netherlands 35%, United Kingdom 26%. I mean, these are huge increases. Uh, New Zealand 17% at that time, above what we would expect. And more up-to-date data here from 21st of May 2023. New Zealand 22%, United Kingdom 14%, Ireland 14%, Netherlands 7%, United States 6%. So we see this ongoing excess deaths now i've just broken this down by country just so we can see it a bit more clearly so this is australia so we see excess now i've taken this again this is starting from 2020 here so um but we see all during the post-covid period really certainly the omicron period excess deaths in australia have increased so when we would expect deaths in Australia to go down, they've increased. Now, to be fair, Australia did have a late Omicron wave, which is partly what that is. But what explains this data here? The excess deaths in Australia have uh, persisted. And uh, friends and colleagues in Australia say this is not being discussed by mainstream media in Australia either, um, which is surprising. Canada, um, again, starting in 2020, um, excess deaths all the way through. We might expect it here, of course, in the early waves. But later on, why is it still high now? Let's hope that drop off in excess deaths in Canada is real. I actually suspect it's a, a lag in uh, Canadian data because Canadians can be a bit tardy with their data. We tend to get it, it just takes a bit of a while to, to, um, to come in. Uh, now, um, this is uh, Ireland. Um, again, pretty well high throughout when you would expect it not when we would expect it here remaining high during this sort of period and this is pretty up to date this is going up to J june 2023 with the irish data so we're still seeing the excess deaths there in ireland netherlands likewise again excess deaths when we would not be expecting it in this time period here i mean th this is just an international trend um I've, okay I've, I've picked english-speaking countries but um uh, it is, you know, th th this data is duplicated in many countries. Um, New Zealand, again, excess deaths now. Again, this is going up to June 2023 when we wouldn't be expecting. And we're looking at huge numbers. This is a 20% line here. Um, th these, are, these are significant numbers of excess deaths. So here is above 20% excess deaths. Um United Kingdom, um, overall, it's above average, remaining above average. Um, yeah, that, that, that line there is the 20% line. So this is, these are significant, uh, significant, you can't quite see that. There we go. That's the 20% that, that's, that's the line there. So <coughs> these are significant numbers of excess deaths in the United Kingdom again. Um, United States, again, well, uh, COVID waves when we would expect it. Here, when we wouldn't expect it, they are remaining uh, high. So, um, excess deaths from all causes remaining high. Cardiovascular deaths in the United Kingdom, um, 500 uh, additional deaths a week. Multiple causes. Let's start discussing all of the causes. And let's get rid of this official silence and this official media silence, because... As I've said many times before, let's suppose it was 500 people a week being killed by a terrorist activity in the United Kingdom. I suspect that will make the news. But because these people are dying at different times in different places, in different villages and hamlets and hospitals across the country, somehow it doesn't seem to matter. But if you spent your life in healthcare or you're a human being, then it matters. The mystery of the official silence uh, persists. 
why aren't we hearing about these excess deaths? They are significant. They are international. And this line here is 10% in the United States. So it's been above that for a lot of the time. And now it remains only a little bit uh, below it, even now. Um, I, I'm bemused. It really is quite incredible. And um, there's not the outcry because people aren't told. Most people are still getting most of their news from the mainstream legacy media, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I think if they were told of this, if they were told about this, then they would be asking serious questions. But they're not told. It takes a bit of effort to find out. But the amount of people I get saying, well, you know, recently I've lost someone and recently I've lost someone and I know the friend and a relative, and it's just um, we're losing more people than we need to. Let's identify the causes, take away the causes and uh, improve everyone's health and hopefully your health and my health. Thank you for watching.